Hey guys, let's get more news about SAN Francisco 49ers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. 5 Players You Forgot Suited Up For The Detroit Lions Quarterback Jeff Garcia played 11 seasons in the NFL and earned Pro Bowl honors in three straight years with the San Francisco 49ers, but most likely don't remember his pit stop with the Detroit Lions. Garcia made five starts for the Lions in 2005, and that was the extent of his career in Detroit. But Garcia probably isn't the only NFL star you may have forgotten who had a cup of coffee or two in the Motor City. Here is a list of five players you may have forgotten who suited up for the Lions. It's often easy to forget that a couple of Chicago Bears legends suited up for the Green Bay Packers. In 2003, Anchuan Bolden turned plenty of heads with the Arizona Cardinals. The sixth wide receiver selected in the 03 draft, the Florida State alum captured Offensive Rookie of the Year honors after catching 101 passes for 1,377 yards and eight touchdowns. In the first game of his NFL career, Bolden had 10 catches for 217 yards. After missing the first six games of his second season because of a knee injury, Bolden had career highs in catches, 102, and receiving yards, 1,402, in his third year in 2005. He ultimately played seven seasons with the Cardinals, reaching the 1,000-yard mark five times, and was a three-time pro bowler. In March 2010, the Cardinals traded Bolden to the Baltimore Ravens for a pair of picks in the 10 draft. He started all 16 games for the Ravens in his first season, hauling in 64 passes for 837 yards and 7 touchdowns. In his third and final season with the team, he earned a Super Bowl ring. Bolden was traded to the San Francisco 49ers in March 2013 and put together two straight 1,000-yard seasons. After three years in San Francisco, he closed his career by playing one year with the Lions in 2016. In his lone year in Detroit, Bolden started all 16 games and caught 67 passes for 584 yards with eight touchdowns. In 2017, he signed with the Buffalo Bills but abruptly retired two weeks later before ever playing in a regular season game. After playing his college ball at San Jose State, Jeff Garcia went undrafted in 1994. He began his professional football career in the Canadian Football League with the Calgary Stampeders and led them to a Grey Cup championship in 1998. After winning the Cup, Garcia signed with the San Francisco 49ers in 1999 as a backup quarterback to Steve Young, who suffered a concussion early in the year and missed the rest of the season. Garcia won his first career NFL start but struggled the rest of the season, going 2-8 in his 10 starts. For the next three seasons, Garcia started all 16 games for the Niners and was named to the Pro Bowl each year. He went 28-20 during that stretch and threw for a career-high 4,278 yards in 2000. He also tossed 31 touchdown passes. After five seasons with the 49ers, Garcia signed with the Cleveland Browns but was released after the season after going 3-7 in his 10 starts. In March 2005, Garcia inked a deal with the Lions to play for head coach Steve Mariucci, who coached Garcia in San Francisco. In the final preseason game, Garcia broke his fibula and didn't return until late October. He made five starts for the Lions and went 1-4. Detroit didn't make him an offer to return in 2006. Garcia finished his career by playing with the Philadelphia Eagles and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Golden Nuggets, what are you hoping to see out of G.I. or Brown this season? Do the 49ers have the pieces to accomplish their goals? Floyd is a proven, consistent veteran who should complement Boza well. Gross Matos projects to be the type of inside-out talent that has thrived in defensive line coach Chris Kikurek's system. The bigger gamble is coming on the inside, where the 49ers have replaced Armstead and Kinlaw with Collins and Elliott. But that overhaul was a bet the 49ers felt they needed to make, simply because the production and consistency there hadn't been up to par. Brown will also be playing for a new defensive coordinator this season. 
Shanahan replaced Wilkes with Nick Sorensen. Perhaps it'll be a good thing for Brown, considering Wilkes initially trusted Ryan to play ahead of him in the playoffs. Brown was ready for his opportunity when Hufanga suffered his knee injury. He proved he's a big moment player by recording an interception in the Super Bowl. Brown possesses the skill set and clear pathway to experience a breakout campaign. Along with Garendo, Melvin Gordon, Jonathan Taylor, and Gore's son Frank Gore Jr., who was signed by the Buffalo Bills as an undrafted free agent, were also being put through their paces by the five-time pro bowler. He's always had a deep rush toolbox with a good feel to affect the QB, the executive said. He was a little quieter when we prepared for him than he was in Philly, but he remains an issue as an interior rusher. The San Francisco 49ers should also take a long look at Gilmore, Knox stated after naming the Kansas City Chiefs as a potential fit. While San Francisco's defense was quite good last season, it finished third in points allowed, it had its issues against top passers like Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and Joe Burrow. Steelers press to make Brandon Ayuk trade. The Pittsburgh Steelers are still waiting for their next opportunity at a wide receiver to pair alongside George Pickens. The excitement of a move for a player like Brandon Ayuk has come and gone numerous times throughout the offseason, but Pittsburgh is still being pressed to make something happen and make it happen soon. Pro Football Focus recently named one move every team should make before training camp. For the Steelers, it's trade for San Francisco 49ers wideout Brandon Ayuk. The Steelers' offense underwent some major changes in the offseason. The front office brought in Russell Wilson and Justin Fields to compete for the starting quarterback job, added three new faces to the offensive line, and traded away Deontay Johnson to the Carolina Panthers. George Pickens is now expected to be the leading receiver, but the Steelers are thin overall at the position, PFF writes. Brandon Ayuk's contract situation is looming large in San Francisco. The former first-round pick will play out 2024 on his fifth-year option and is due to be a free agent at the end of the season. While the 49ers would like to have him back, we've yet to see a long-term deal play out. And when it does, it'll likely be for big money, money the 49ers may not be able to afford. That could open the door for a receiver-needy team like the Steelers to make a move. The Ajax situation has been a roller coaster ride. One week, it appears he's ready to move on and is posting about how the 49ers do not want him in San Francisco. The next, there are reports that the two sides are having successful meetings and no trade appears to be on the table. While before training camp might be a little early for an Ajax trade, the Steelers will likely have another window of opportunity at some point this offseason. If no deal is done before camp begins, they'll likely get a shot then, and if not, it will come toward the season in late August. Using the team's remaining cap space to add a big-name weapon on offense isn't a bad move. When and how it happens could be the breaking points for the Steelers. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Brandon AIYUK? Leave your opinion in the comments.